whenever I get a nasty comment on Instagram, like a cruel comment or a, you know, a racist comment or something, yeah. it's always somebody that's, you know, hiding behind a different name or, you know. Welcome to another episode of Chewing the Fat. I am your host, Big Rob. Thank you so much for downloading the episode and listening in. I certainly do appreciate it. Thank you for the folks that have bought me a coffee at ChewingTheFatBR.com. I appreciate the help in keeping the podcast rolling. And I am so excited about my guest this week. All right, this is this is going to be a treat for all of us this time because this my guest this week is someone I... I barely know other than a probably four paragraph conversation back and forth via Instagram. Please welcome Rob Momarts. Correct. Yes. <laughs> right. I was, I almost, I almost doubted myself as I was saying your name. Uh, Rob is an illustrator, an amazing illustrator. Uh, Rob, just to gush Thank you. on you for a while, I have followed. Uh, you for quite a while on Instagram. Uh, it's, uh, I followed a, another illustrator and he followed you and I saw your stuff and it's just, I just love your style. I love. Thank you. The, your, 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 I love your line work and your colors, <laughs> uh, your style. Uh, it, it's just, it just, it's, there's so much emotion and joy and, uh, in the work that you do. So, so, uh, thank you. Yeah. I, I, I am, I am so pleased to have you here, uh, talking to me today. Um, Rob, and, and, and it's funny how we kind of started the conversation when I say that we literally, that it literally was like a four paragraph back and forth over Instagram. I think I had liked, uh, a design that you had done and posted on your Instagram and, um, I don't know if I, I, maybe I commented on it or whatever. And you wrote back because we were both Robs with two B's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the whole conversation started over double B, double B, the yeah. double B club. That's right. <laughs> Rob, <Rob-a-ba. laughs> yeah. I've heard that many times throughout my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so Rob, where oh, you're calling in from, uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Green Bay, right? is, Wisconsin. Yep. So is Wisconsin home for you? Is that where you grew up? Yes. I grew up in Green Bay and still live here. And, uh, yep. I've, I haven't ventured out too far. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, it's right now we're experiencing the, the early spring. So it's yeah. been, kind of, you know, 50, 60 one day and the next day it's 20 and, you know, so that's been interesting, but I just got back from my, my son started playing soccer in this one league mm-hmm. and he had his first outdoor scrimmage today, tonight. Yeah. And it was on a pretty nice field, um, our artificial turf, but we were out there in the wind and it rained and it was, it was pretty miserable standing wow. up there for an hour, but, uh, it was about, I was about in the thirties, but. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. That, that does sound miserable. Uh, how, how old is your son? He's 11 and a half, oh, wow. sixth grade. So, and and yeah. so this is his first foray into, into soccer. He played soccer a little while back and then he stopped playing for a while. And then last fall he started up again and he's getting a little more serious about it. Very he cool. really enjoys it. So cool. yeah. that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so as far as like uh, you're, you getting your start in illustrating and uh, graphic design and draw, drawing, um, was that always from a, from a young age where you, a scribbler? Yes. very early age, uh, two or three years old, I started drawing and I was always very inspired mostly by, uh, Jim Henson's always been mm. a huge, I've always been a huge fan of Jim Henson and all his stuff. And I yes. was exposed to that at a pretty young age, Sesame street and mm-hmm. the Muppet show and, um, and other, you know, cartoons that were on at the time, Looney Tunes and and all that stuff comics and um but the I, when i was real little i recently was going through my mom saved a ton of old artwork and dropped it off at the house i had all these huge bins full of art yeah and most of it i was surprised but most of it was all like 80 percent sesame street drawings oh wow a young age it was it was kind of funny because i could i could tell who was who in the in the images you know big bird with the the 
orange and pink striped legs and yeah. <laughs> but they're all pretty scribbly drawings but but yeah young age I, I always from a very very young age i knew i wanted to be a some sort of artist illustrator or yeah um cartoonist or yeah. whatnot but um yeah since very young age either that or i always tell people this i either want to do that or be an astronaut when i found astronauts didn't have lightsabers then i lost interest so yeah <laughs> <laughs> If you can't have a lightsaber or right? laser guns, yeah. but um, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, drawing, it was always, uh, I, I, I've, I think I've, I think I might've had a attention deficit when I was, a, when I was younger. Cause I, I know I always got in trouble a lot in school for drawing during class and drawing on, on, um, you know, math sheets and that sort of thing. I found, I found recently found a bunch of old papers from, um, like math tests, uh -huh. which I usually did pretty poorly on, of course, but, <laughs> um, but there was all these, you know, monsters drawn in the margins and the teacher would always write, you know, this is not art class. This is, you know, math and mm -hmm. that, that kind of thing. So that kind of plagued me my whole, not plagued me, but my whole life, you know, I was always doodling and getting in trouble for it in yeah. class. But, you know, I, th I think there's something special about, especially those kids that, that have that type of stuff inside and, and, and you, and you need to get it out. I mean, you, 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 you know, you, at least you were just, you know, you're drawing on your, your math homework or whatever, but you know, it's not like you were disturbing the rest of the class. It's like, yes, you may not have been getting the <laughs> education per se that the teacher wanted you to have, yeah. but you know, there, there's something magical about uh, taking uh, those things that are inside and making them real on the outside by, you know, drawing mm -hmm. or writing music or poetry or that type of stuff. I was a pretty quiet kid growing up in, in some ways, um, shy. And, but I, I always could get people to laugh by doing funny drawings. And sometimes that would get me in trouble. Uh -huh. You know, I would do a drawing and send it to one of my friends across the classroom and, or someone would ask me to draw, you know, they'd say, draw this, you know, or draw the teacher or something right, like that. Right. And, you know, that kind of thing. I, you know, I get in trouble, but. Gotcha. Yeah. That's, 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 and so obviously that, that bug, that natural talent, you just, you kept, you kept up with, it. you kept going, you uh, went into school for art. Uh, yes. After high school. Um, all? Yeah. All, all through high school. Uh, I took, you know, every art class I could take. Mm -hmm. Um. And it, well, I started actually freelance doing freelance illustration when I was in high school. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I did, I did quite a bit of, I mean, I had a part-time job that, um, I worked at off, office max. So mm. I don't know if you have them down by you. I'm assuming you do or yeah, office depot. Office depot, I think. Yeah. Um, and I worked there for throughout high school, but I mostly did that as just, just to get, you know, experience working with others and, getting out of the house and i used to for a short period of time me and my friends would kind of get into mischief nothing nothing harmful but uh my mom it told you know my mom and dad wanted me to go out and get a job and and when i was about 16 but um but, but the the freelance illustration was great because you know i got to do something i love doing mm -hmm. and get paid for it yeah and and i did quite a different um I had some different clients I had. I was drawing for a, the, one of the weirder ones was for a, um, this was pre-internet, but it was a, a mail order catalog. Mm. So I was drawing all these like handmade soaps and like um, random things. It was, it was, it was kind of fun candles and stuff like that. Wow. It wasn't the most exciting work, but it was fun. And, and uh, just, you know, all line art that would go in these you know, one color catalogs. Yeah. And, um, and some of the more fun stuff I, I was doing conceptual art for a few different smaller like marketing agencies. Mm -hmm. And I know there was one, you know, I live in green Bay. So Lambeau field, um, Pat green Bay Packers. There was, there's always like different events going on or promotional stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember doing some stuff for a company where they were promoting one of those, you know, those, um, those jet packs you see on, um, I don't know. You don't see them as much anymore, but they're like these weird, I don't know what they're, how they fly, but they, they, you'd see them at sporting events oh. in like the seventies and eighties. Yeah. And like 90s. the, like the compressed air jet packs, like the guys yes. flying around yep. or whatever, you know, I, I remember doing a thing for 
for that once for, I don't know, I can't remember who the client was, but it was, um, I had to do that. I had you like the, who's the, the Bud man of the superhero, uh-huh. the Budweiser guy. And, um, trying to think what else, what other ones I did a few of them different for different client for, um, to, to use to, um, as proposals. Yeah. So that was, that was, that kind of stuff was a lot of fun to do. And yeah. uh, one of the, the most memorable freelance work I did when I, in high school, our, our local newspaper, the Green Bay Press Gazette, it had a pretty good s- circulation, but they had, they started a team page. Mm-hmm. So they were looking for t- artists and, you know, middle school and high school to, um, to write articles, do reviews, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all from, you know, teen perspective, mm-hmm. but I did a lot of the artwork for that, for the editorial articles and, um, yeah, so that I did a ton of work for that. And I for a while I had like a comic strip in there. It was kind of kind of not the best comic strip, but <laughs> yeah. But it was it was it was a it was great experience. I still have all that stuff today in a binder. Yeah, I saved all the clippings. This was in the nineties. I mean, you're but you're. I mean, you you had a, a published comic strip in high school. That's that's pretty cool. It was fun. It was only I think I only did like seven of them, maybe tops, but. But yeah, it was it was cool to see that in print and and uh, and that work kind of I got to do some more work for them when I was in college, which was which was really fun. Beyond that, beyond the team page, so yeah. so that was yeah. Is, is it cool now to kind of look back at some of that stuff to see how far you've progressed? And I mean, I, I've got a I I can't draw stick figures, so I don't know exactly what that process is like, (laughs) but to be able to look back and go like, man, I remember sweating over that, trying to get that out. Whereas now, you know, I'm I'm sure you're still sweating over stuff, but it it comes so much more fluid and much more natural for you to be able to get into that rhythm and get into that zone. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fun to look back at that stuff because this was, this was all like I, when I started school, it was when, when it, it was kind of the, the, the design world was transitioning and using Max. Mm. So all like Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator and all those programs. And I, you know, before, before college, I, I don't think I, I think the only computer I ever touched was the, the like the one in keyboarding class in high school. Right. So when I did all that stuff for the newspaper, it was all, you know, traditional hand rendered art that they would just scan and print in the, in wow. the paper. But uh, you know, as time went on, it was, it was, it was fun learning, um, th- those learning how to use those, the, the, the Adobe software and, mm-hmm. and in college and, you know, moving on to college. Yeah. yeah. Did that, did the advancement in technology, uh, did you, did you find that freeing in a way for your style or, or helping you define your style of art for like maybe what you're doing now? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, because I mean that that was years ago, and I obviously still am working. I, I still work fifty fifty, like um, half traditional hand rendered art, and then versus I do all like the colors digitally and text and that sort of thing. Okay. But um, yeah, it it uh, it was it was really cool because at the time I I thought you know, f- jumping to, to doing things on a computer. I thought well, <laughs> once I saw my art on an actual computer screen, it was very real to me. It was, it was just kind of, you know, before previous, it was always, everything was on, on paper and it just seemed more professional seeing it up on a, on a uh, computer screen with, oh, wow. you know, and I immediately changed the colors and everything was a lot quicker to do it digitally. And it was, you know, it was exciting to see. Yeah. Is there um, somebody that you're a a big fan of right now that maybe is is completely different stylistically than than you, uh, uh, an artist or illustrator or somebody like that? Well, there's uh, that's a the thing, and there's so many of them that yeah. just blow my mind. I, I go on, I get lost when I go on Instagram and flipping through all the <laughs> amazing stuff that pops up, and the the, the worst part of it is when when I look and I see something and I, I find out the person's like half my age and they're uh, like, like in college or like, I'm like, what <laughs> you're doing that at that age. It's, it's kind of insane, yeah. but yeah, but yeah, there's, a, I mean, I have a, I have uh, f- folders on my Mac at home that I have like all my favorite artists. There's hundreds of them. Mm-hmm. 
but I just, whenever I find discover a new artist, I just, I just grab whatever I can from their, for what they have posted online and I throw it in a folder and I look at it for inspiration while I'm working or if I'm um, thinking of like, if I'm drawing, doing a character design, I'm thinking like, how would this person draw, you know, uh, a 90 year old man or mm-hmm. whatever, you know, mm-hmm. I go back and I kind of look through their work and you just, you know, try not to copy it, of course, but right, right. Um, just, you know, for just for inspiration and, and just to spark new ideas. And, but yeah, yeah. It, and Instagram is such a, uh, it's such a nice, I, I mostly stick, I use stick to like the artwork on Instagram. I don't really go around looking for other things, mm-hmm. but there's a, just a real nice supportive artist community on there. That's, um, that's great. And everybody leaves nice comments. And yeah, I was going to ask if, if, uh, in that world of, of illustration and, you know, design, if, if it's a supportive community, it is. Uh, yeah. It's, and it's a lot of like, like-minded individuals and, and, and um, lots of mutual respect. And, and if you're looking for advice on something, if it's te- technical advice or career advice, there's always someone on there to, to uh, guide you in some way. That's so like cool. I had a friend that um, he saw, I had commented about a, a, a printer and he, he went and he shot this whole video at home and sent it to me through Instagram. And I was like, Wow, thank you. You show me how to use the printer and it's it that kind of stuff I just love. That's awesome. Yeah. And so it's so again, because that's not a I, I like to look at the pretty pictures. Uh, but it's good to know that the people that are creating that art are, you know, that type that type of community as well. That makes me yeah. feel even better about the appreciation of it. Uh I know you've got a book series out, uh Claude. Yes. A L A W D E Claude. Yes, Claude, Evil Alien, Warlord, Cat. It's a a series through um, Penguin Workshop, and it's written by Johnny Marciano and Emily Chenoweth. And it, the sixth book came out this past August, the, the final book. Mm-hmm. And um, and I started that series a few years back, and it w- it was a it was a huge deal for me because I always wanted to get like a. a a, a middle grade chapter book series. Mm-hmm. And this was like my first time working with one of the bigger publishers. So this was, this was a dream job for me basically. Yeah. And um, the last two books I did when the, when the pandemic started. Mm. So it was kind of weird because, you know, my, my, my day, I work, I have a day job. I work for cryptozoic entertainment and I work remotely there in California. I mean, up, up in green bay totally different weather of course <laughs> and um but i've been working for them for 11 years mm-hmm. and um it's it that's a dream job it's it's so much fun to work for those guys and we do you know a lot of fun stuff together but I, on the side of publishing i i do i like picking up freelance job for like children's publishing and yeah and and this series came about um my job with Cryptozoic did not, didn't slow down during the pandemic because life didn't change for me at all. Cause I, I work in my little dungeon basement here and, <laughs> and where I don't see anybody except a dog all day long. And, and uh, the last two books came out when the pan, when, when the pandemic started. So I was kind of like cranking on those, trying to get those finished. So it was kind of weird. Cause I saw, I had, you know, people that I knew that were not working and they were just kind of like bored at home and, I was kind of stressed out at that time because I had a lot going on and it was kind of a very weird situation, but, uh, but yeah, but yeah, it's, um, this project came at a good time for me, um, because it was just, uh, like I, 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 it was something I had always wanted to do and I hope it leads to more work. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. How, how do you, how do you find work? How, how would, how would someone coming along, you know, you know, find work? Well, most like before I, I joined DeviantArt. Are you mm. familiar with DeviantArt? Yeah. Um, I, I joined them. I think maybe about, I think it was right before my daughter. I have a 14 year old daughter also. And it was right before she was born And that. Once I got on an online art community, that like changed everything for me because I was mostly doing, Freelance. I worked as a graphic designer for 15 years before I was an illustrator Mm -hmm. and I worked in an agency. So I did, I did some illustration there, Mm -hmm. but, um, 
getting online and joining, you know, joining up with other illustrators and meeting people at comic conventions and that sort of thing. That was just like the world opened up for yeah. me then. And, um, I, I'm not too active on D De- I'm not really active at all on deviant anymore, yeah. mostly just Instagram, but, um, yeah, because I because I was mostly doing for, working for local clients, mm-hmm. and then when I when I started putting my stuff online, I it's my work kind of got out there, and I started picking up um, freelance from different companies throughout the country and the world and whatever, and um, and then on Deviant or on on Instagram, someone from Penguin saw my work, and and that's how I got the Claude the job and well actually that's how i also got my job with cryptozoic is the work i had on DeviantArt. oh wow years back and they found me on there and they hired me for a, pro- a freelance project and they offered me a position with the with the company because they were just like a year old at the time which was yeah. which was pretty cool and um but but i started working with an agent just a year ago okay. with um uh Jill Grinberg literary management mm-hmm. and my agent, Jessica St. John. Um, and um, I, I, we, we've been slowly like picking up projects here and there and it's, it's, just, it's been going really good, but, um, but starting with cryptozoic back, what that was, well, 11 years ago, I, I started working with them. They hired me for a, a, a game they were doing called food fighter or food fight. Mm-hmm. And it was to design all these really crazy, like fast food um, characters, <laughs> like weird, like uh, I'm trying to think they were kind of mili- mil- militaristic, <laughs> like food characters, okay. like, you know, like a pizza like, with a bazooka and that kind say, of like thing. Like a chicken but, nugget with a bandolier on or something. Yeah. Right? I, yeah. There, there's a, some pretty crazy characters and there were some like food icons, like, you know, um, parodies of certain characters, but uh-huh. that, and that w- it was a card game. And then from there, yeah, I, I, I've ever since I've been working with them full time. I left my, my job at the, uh, as a graphic designer yeah. and that was, it was a lifesaver for me because I, I had always wanted to be a, a full-time illustrator and, yeah. and, uh, they, and they keep me busy with lots of cool things, <laughs> fun that's, things. That's awesome. So, yeah. So, so the, so the lesson is, is if you are an artist and you are an illustrator, put your art out. Don't, don't, don't keep it in a folder, put it somewhere yes, where people can find definitely. it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I tell that to my son who plays uh, piano all the time. I was like, you know, you, you want to do this. You have to be out where the work is. You, you can't stay at home and play in your room and write and compose your stuff. You've still got to put it out, you know? Yep. Um, so, so that somebody can stumble across it so that you can be found, you know, if you're not in that, you know, atmosphere, you know, on a daily type basis, where, I mean, you were in a, you know, an ad agency, you were doing some stuff, but it still wasn't the stuff that, that really made your heart sing. And it was you putting that stuff that you really loved doing out it allowed people to find you. Yeah. yeah and, and chat with other artists. And, and there were some artists that, that, that I admired before I was even, before my work was online. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of surreal because when I worked at the ad agency, I used to go through the illustration annuals and I, on my lunch break, and I would like cut out different illustrators I really admired. Mm-hmm. And and I, I had a folder that I kept at my desk and I put all these different, you know, portfolio samples in there. And a lot of those guys I met years later on, you know, on DeviantArt or uh, Instagram. And, yeah. and it, it's, it's, it's kind of surreal to, to go back and to, to think that, you know, I would be talking to these people <laughs> like in a few years and, yeah. and uh, you know, trading comments or tips or that kind of thing. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's pretty is is pretty surreal. Do you ever tell them that hey, I have I have your picture in my lookbook folder of inspiration? Yes, there's a there's a few of them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's but and once in a while, you know, once in a while I'll see somebody that I that I that I you know, they'll leave a comment and it's someone that I didn't know that knew who I was and it's kind of like what? You know, I'll see their name you know in my feed or something like that and it's 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 pretty exciting. Yeah. That's so cool. That's so yeah. cool. And I, I mean, I could just, I can tell by your face as we're talking over zoom, you know, that you are really, uh, 
you know, you, you are loving what you're doing. And, uh, I mean, you are, you also seem very appreciative of the place that you're in right now to be able to be doing mm-hmm. what you're doing and what you love. Oh yeah. And Cryptozoic, um, they do, there's different properties I've got to work with like Rick and Morty. And I don't know if you've ever seen that show, but I mean, I've heard of it. <laughs> yeah. I, I did some games with like some of the cartoon network shows and, Yes. Um, some of the D, some some DC comic stuff and and there was there was one project I had to work on that was really exciting for me because I was a huge friend a friend fan <laughs> of the Super Friends cartoon I was growing up yeah. the seventies one and I got to illustrate in the style of the original show I had to I had to kind of match the, like the 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 environment paintings and that like Hall of Justice and all that kind of stuff and then the way that they drew Batman and Robin and the Flash and yeah. Green Lantern and all those characters in that same style. And it was, it was kind of surreal working on that. Cause I'm like, man, I, I was watching this cartoon as a little kid and now I'm, you know, I get to work on an actual official, uh, super friends wow. get card game. And it was, that was pretty exciting. That's so cool. I'm going to sound real geeky and a little stalkery when I say this, but I think it, it was a illustration you put around around 2017. You did a, um, Christmas Carol with the, with the, um, uh, where with uh, Scrooge sitting in the chair and the ghost of Marley, but it was like kids. Yeah, that was that was one of my Christmas cards. My every year I do a a, a, a card uh, a card design. I've been doing this actually since 1995. Yeah. <laughs> hard to believe. Every year I do a card, and when my kids were born, I started theming the card around my kids. And then that one you're talking about was it was my. I had my daughter as, as the Marley character, uh-huh. as the ghost. And uh-huh. then my son was in the Scrooge and then th- my dog is sitting in the image too. But yes. yeah, I love that. I'm, I'm a huge like Christmas Carol fan. That's it's like, I, I'm a huge Christmas Carol fan. And I saw that and I think it was just probably one of the most, I uh, just, just striking pieces that I'd seen. And I just loved it so much. Uh, I mean, Thank you. If, if I happen to give you my address and you put me on your Christmas card list, I wouldn't definitely. Mind that yeah, I was going to ask that after the show <laughs> see if I could get your address, put you on the list. Shameless, I'm gonna be shameless. No, no. And, <laughs> I would have asked you anyways. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Um, is is there something that's uh, on the horizon that you are really stoked to 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 be working for uh, or, or doing that you've got coming up? Well, right now, um, I don't have any. Right now, I'm basically I'm working on some portfolio pieces just for to see if I can get more um, chapter book work. Oh, gosh. Awesome. So I'm working on some fun um, it, it, images of uh, my well, my one of my all time favorite books, of course, is is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, so right yeah. now, I'm working on some sample illustrations to put. Um, like a cover design and some um, some of the classic uh, scenes from that from the original book, wow. the Roald Dahl book. Yes, um, and um, trying to stick. I, I, I had I'm trying not to watch the the. I, I wasn't a huge fan of the the. I was kind of a little. I hate to say it, a little disappointed in the Tim Burton version. Yeah, yeah. but I, I love the 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 original uh, Gene Wilder yes. movie. But I'm trying to I haven't seen no, either of those in a long time. So I'm trying to stay away from watching those. Mm-hmm. And so I'm trying to stick to the 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 original the text role, doll text. Yeah. The, you know, obviously, but um and uh there's so many little details in that that I I did not remember at since I was a kid uh, like how they describe Willy Wonka. He's actually like a smaller mm-hmm. um like a almost child sized man and and uh I'm used to the big tall Gene Wilder there. Mm-hmm. Um but like some of the the other the the character descriptions and and uh is kind of interesting. I just reread the book again and uh I think I I hadn't read 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 the book since I was maybe about ten years old maybe or eight or something. I can't remember but mm-hmm. but uh yeah it's um but it's that's been so much fun to work on just designing the characters and I'm trying to do something a little different with them and yeah. seeing what other artists have done in the past and just trying to take a different spin on it. Yeah. By while still being faithful to the original text. Yeah. But and I'm also trying to slowly this is this is where I, I get frustrated with myself sometimes. I, I I have all these different ideas of things that I want to put together like um 
a creator owns things. Mm -hmm. I'd like to do, there's so many different ideas I have that are constantly evolving, but just um, some, a few different like fantasy or sci-fi graphic novel ideas Mm -hmm. uh, based on some, just some different characters here and there. I'll put stuff on Instagram, like different character designs, like wizards and that sort of thing. Yeah. But I, I really want to get serious about putting something together uh, I'm not the best writer in the world, but I'm, I'm, I'm okay, but I'd like to do something for younger readers mm. and, you know, graphic, graphic novels with kids right now are so huge yeah. and there's so much cool material out there. That's just so inspiring. And it's, it's, there's, there's a story inside of me that I just want to get out and, and, but I just have a hard time getting all those details to make sense. You know, I have like t- sketchbooks full of, weird random character designs you know and i i keep real messy sketchbooks with um i am i work i work with like cheap tools like ballpoint pens and highlighters and that sort of thing so all my my ideas are very random yeah but uh one of these days i'm gonna just finally solidify them into something that's that's a little that's you know a little more concrete that's awesome. You know, it's it's funny you talk about uh, you know wanting to do something you know the, that kind of graphic novel uh, realm. I remember um, growing up. I, I, this is probably I don't remember if this was like middle school, uh, early high school, or, or late elementary school. Um, there were these pocket classic books. I have a bunch that, of those that are these yeah. illustrated versions of classic books. I, I have, I have, a, I have two stacks of them over here, right here in my office. And I, I love these things. And these are how I was introduced to those classics. They were how I wanted to learn to read those, you know, a call of the wild Frankenstein, Dracula, all of those great classic books. And it's just, it's black and white line art, you know, panels. The um, art in those are be- is just beautiful. That I have a little story about those because my grandpa used to work at a St. Vincent de Paul and he used to bring back comic books for me and he was legally blind. So sometimes he didn't, he didn't know what he was bringing back. Mm-hmm. There was a few times where I got some kind of interesting comics. <laughs> they were like of the 1970s art crumb, but, but oh. far worse than that. Oh no. And uh, yeah. And uh, I learned some things pretty quickly, but um, if he, if he would have known that he would have, he would have freaked out. But, um, but, he g- gave me a whole set of those and I still have them. Mm-hmm. And I actually, I think, uh, I think in middle school, there was a few times when I, when I uh, forgot to do a book report. So I would grab one of those yeah. and read one of the classic stories. And I would do the book, quickly do the book report based off of that. Yeah. But I hope none of my old teachers hear this. But. Well, I mean, what are they, they going to do? Fail you now? I mean, it's like, yeah. it's, it's like a little pad. It's like you're, you're outside the, uh, the, the realm of being able to do anything about that. But, but yeah, I, I, same way. I love those things. I, and I thought that's, uh, and what a great gift to give to children to be able to make it into a way that's very approachable to them because it's something that, you know, they're already reading comics. Oh, it looks like a comic, but it's these classic novels in that type of realm. Um, but being able to do your own and creating these new universes and, and, uh, you know, molding things that they might, uh, y- y- you know, that they can then, you know, latch onto and stuff. I, I, and they, they could then inspire them to, uh, draw and illustrate, but also to read, you know, well, there's a, I remember just a couple of years ago, uh, sometimes I, I do school visits once in a while and they're mostly like around this area. Mm-hmm. And it mostly at my kid, my kids' schools. <laughs> and it's been a while since I've done one since the you know pandemic started. But I did a a a, a reading and like a little workshop for some kids at a uh, for the I think it was up in Door County, which is north of me. It's a really beautiful. It, it's the if you look at the state of Wisconsin, it's the thumb of Wisconsin. It's a really um, beautiful vacation area. But it's just a it's about a forty five minute drive from where I live. And I went up there and I did a thing for a um, a group of kids at an after school program. I think with the, I think it was with the boys and girls club. Mm-hmm. And there were these there were these two little or two or three little boys after that walked up to me, and they had like this homemade comic they did, 
and they were showing me all the characters and they both collaborated on this and the, the look on their yeah. faces, I'll never forget that they were so excited about it. And it was, it was so inspiring to see that. Yeah. And uh, it actually kind of choked me up a little bit. Um, but they were telling me about the different characters and, and uh, but these two kids have been working on this after school together, you know, at, at this program. And, oh man, it was, it was, it just brought me back to when I was a kid when I would do that with my friends and, and, but they were, they were very enthusiastic and it was a really fun story too. The artwork was really cool and that's, pretty, it was pretty funny. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome to be able to. It's just stuff like that that really inspires me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there in your, you're looking ahead, you know, is there a, a, a brass ring that you want to grab a client, a, a, a character, a, I mean, I know you want to do your own stuff, but is there like, man, if I could get a contract with this company to be able to do this character or whatever that, um, that you're always have in the back of your mind? Well, I mean, I would love to, to develop something for with my, some of my own characters, but I mean, I would love to do, just, just do another book series. Um, and, and, um, and I guess if, if it was, a I'm trying to think if it was a, um, a previously created character, a well-known character, it'd be, it'd be cool to work on something w- that was, uh, with the, the Henson company. Um, mm. cause I've always been a huge fan of yes. the Muppets. And when I was a kid, I actually wrote, I, I still have the letter, but I wrote Jim Henson when I was a kid and I got a letter back from him, which was, which oh, was awesome. Wow. Yeah. And I have it, it's framed in my office and, um, and he, in the, in the letter, this was in 1985, a few years before he passed away, but, um, in the letter, he encouraged me to keep drawing and, and wow. he, he said he enjoyed looking at my art. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming, I don't know if he, <laughs> I'm assuming he actually wrote it, right. but, uh, it's signed by him. Yeah. But uh, that would that just was a huge inspiration for me because he was I mean he's been a hero of mine since I was a little you know four years old since I knew knew who he was actually I mean yeah, um, yeah so but uh, and he also sent they they sent uh, I I was a huge fan of the, the great Gonzo the character Gonzo yes. and, and and he sent me an autographed photo of Gonzo that was signed by Dave Goles the the voice of Gonzo so, yes the performer. So I still, I have those in my office, but, oh, wow. but yeah, but, but yeah, I, I always want to do something with the Muppets, but there's, I'm, I'm on a big list of people that want to do that. There's, if you go on Instagram, there's, a, there's a tons of awesome uh, Muppet fan art on there. So, but I mean, you know, it, as you can attest, it only takes the one right person to see what you've done. So, uh, you know, keep hoping you know, <laughs> talk to your agent. Hey, if you could slide this across the Henson group desk, I'd appreciate well, you, that. You and know? you mentioned, uh, and you mentioned a Christmas Carol. Yeah. That's like my all time favorite story. Oh, so, yeah. and, and to, to me, I, there's a million beautifully illustrated versions of that book, but some, something, of, a project like that, that would be on a, based on a classic. Yeah. Yeah. Classic literature that I, I would love that. I, I'm going to, I'm going to say a title because as you say that, I'm going to say a title and see if you've ever heard of it. Um, if so L Frank Baum, the life and adventures of Santa Claus. Yes. Yes. I love that. I have a, uh, I'm trying to, I'm drawing a blank on his name. He's a wa- wonderful watercolor painter. Um, I think he just passed away. Um, I have a, I bought a version of that book. And I don't know mm. if it's the original. It, it, it's a it's a, a a picture book, but it's mm. pretty you know thick picture book. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how how much text was in the original, mm-hmm. but it. Uh, they, I think they actually did a. Did they do a stop motion movie of that years yes. back? I'm, yes, there was they? a Rankin okay. Bass. Rankin, yep. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the lesser known ones, though. It, it kind of takes the backseat to Rudolph, and right? All the other. But it, it's 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 one of my favorite ones. It, it it definitely diverges from the original, you know, text. Uh, but just as much as uh, the Wizard of Oz diverges a lot from the original text of the book, mm-hmm. too. If you're looking at the movie compare, uh, but yes, uh, they did have a, a, a stop motion or 
whatever whatever that process is called. It's not claymation. I realize that, but it's but yeah, the stop motion uh, Rankin Bass of Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. Usually, I can find that on like you know an Amazon or something around the holidays. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, always, I always put it on my list to watch. So there's a lot of um, Rankin Bass films that I there's some that pop up that I haven't even heard of, which is weird. I mean, I thought I I thought I'd seen them all, and and there's. Yeah. Like there was that one I just saw recently. It was um, it was a leprechaun film, and I didn't know that existed. Yeah. Um, trying to think of the title of it. it's a Rankin Bass film from I think maybe from the early seventies. The Leprechaun's Christmas Gold. Is okay, that, is that the one you're talking? So it about? It's a, got the. I think so. I think it's tie in with Christmas. Yeah, it's got the banshee <laughs> that's like buried under a tree, and you know the sailor yeah, comes some, to get a tree on the boat or whatever and then the release some of the those energy. visuals are kind of nightmarish when you think of them like some of the time when yeah. you're when i was a little kid well some it, of the stuff was kind of kind of creepy in a way it was cool but it was well that's like the uh you know rankin bass did a animated um uh, was it i always mess it up was it was it lord of the rings or the hobbit i remember watching one of those in school in elementary school and being kind of freaked out by it yeah. Like it was kind of intense for the, for that time. I wasn't used to seeing cartoons like that, that where you actually felt fear. And yeah, <laughs> it was especially like when, uh, was it, uh, Gollum, uh, he was trying to throw the ring back into the, and he bit his finger off in the cartoon. And it's like, what? Oh, I didn't know they actually showed that in the cartoon. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's like he, he bites his, I don't think there's any blood or anything, but he comes up and there's no finger there. And it's like, he just bit wow. his finger off. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> here's your cartoon for the day, kids. You know? Well, I had an old, I still have it. My grandma gave it to me. Um, but she had an, this old, I'm trying to think, I don't have it in front of me. I think it's on my bookshelf over there if I can see it. But it's uh, Great Children's Stories. And I, I can't remember the, the name of the illustrator. He's from like uh, the turn of the century. Mm-hmm. And he, it, it's all the old school uh, fables, you know, mm-hmm. like um, uh, three like little Green pigs Boy. and big bet or um, um, what kind of mother goose the, rhymes or Bill or, goats gruff and all those stories. Oh, oh grim fairy and, tales. And and they, these are like from turn of the century, so they didn't really hold back on creepy visuals and and they didn't you know try to make it more kid friendly. It was yeah. these cautionary tales and yeah. And I remember my grandma reading those to me, and I remember I would just silently stare at those images, and it. it <laughs> they creep me out. I mean, just the way they drew people, these creepy, you know, sugar bowl haircuts and weird <laughs> <laughs> dancing around in tights and pointy shoes and, yeah. and just weird, creepy stuff in there. But I remember, uh, I think it was the Billy Goats Gruff that freaked me out the most where, you know, they, they, if they were going to, you know, if a character died, they actually, you know, got eaten or something like mm-hmm. something creepy like that. But, um, but my grand, my grandma gave me that book years later, and it kind of as a joke. And I think I'm, I think maybe when I graduated high school or something like that. And uh, but uh, yeah, I still have that on my shelf, and I always go back and look at it. Just for, it's just, for nostalgia, scar tissue from your youth. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Rob, what is uh, outside of illustration and work and things like that? What's bringing you joy now? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a dad, so I have two kids and, and, uh, and spending time with my kids and seeing how it, it, the, they seem to be like, you know, I, every parent says this, but they, they're, they're growing up so, so quickly. And, and my daughter's going to be in high school next year, which just free, really freaks me out. And, um, just thinking all that, how, quickly that time passed on like me and my wife this past weekend we were going through some of their old toys and just kind of packing things up and mm-hmm. finding better spots for them in storage and in, in our basement and it just kind of made me sad going through all that stuff and you had a um i think it was the jonathan cook episode that you had on your podcast he had mentioned something about uh, keeping a lot of his kids old toys mm-hmm. for nostalgia because they had you know connected with different memories and and uh that's how it is with me and it's it's funny because um, yeah it's it's like I can't I don't like getting rid of anything and right um, it's hard for me to do that but um, but yeah like spending time with my kids and and uh, um, and now that things are getting warmer outside uh, being out in nature and going for walks and yeah. 
and uh yeah and and it, it the one thing that's i guess it's it's a good thing and a bad thing but having my hobby be something i actually do for a living yeah that brings me a lot of satisfaction and for sure yeah 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 do you uh, uh, uh ever illustrate any <laughs> sunsets sunrises that type of stuff or um is that is that like paintings out in nature that yeah. kind of thing yeah um not often once in a while i'll do that if i'm on vacation i'll i'll if i'm during the day i just want to be outside and do something creative mm -hmm. i don't feel like fishing or anything like that or something you know i i'll, I'll have a, i always have a sketchbook with me whenever i go on vacation and yeah i know we stayed up at a lake uh last last summer and i i did a like a pen and ink drawing of off the off the dock and of the lake and it was a be really beautiful setting but in a lot of you know do a lot of photography with my iphone now that you know you can take some pretty nice photos with iphones and yeah and uh, uh i really enjoy that I, I keep lots of reference material so i do a lot of photography for oh wow for nature shots and that sort of thing yeah so does that help you like for if you're like obviously you say you're using it for reference but for like textural colors uh, all of the above that type of stuff yeah in environments like i had mentioned before i i live just south of um the in wisconsin in this area is called door county and it's door counties are just a beautiful place it's lots of like cool rock formations and it's, it's you're surrounded by the lake michigan and then on the other side is the the uh, bay of green bay so and there's they have lots of beautiful parks there and i go up there and take lots of photos and i use those for um some of my some of my illustrations if i if i have like I do, I, I love drawing animals. So I, a lot of times I'll, I'll use that as a setting for uh, I, years back. I illustrated a, a, a picture book series called this. Uh, this was um, oh God, almost 20 years ago. Now it's hard to believe. Wow. Um, the, it's called the Solomon Raven series. Mm. It was a four book series and it's all based on uh, animals of the North woods that you'd find around here, mm -hmm. you know, North American animal animals. And it's a, each book shows a different season, winter, fall, spring, summer and i door county i use that as a setting for a lot of the imagery i took lots of photos and and um and that always helps me uh, just come up with different ideas and when i'm out when i'm out in nature i come up with a lot of different ideas too i'll see cool looking trees or rocks or moss or whatever and and uh incorporate that into a lot of my art yeah. i love drawing or more organic things I, I suck at drawing cars and buildings and that sort of stuff <laughs> <laughs> i struggle at it but yeah. Is, is there a, I was going to ask if there's something uh, that you still find difficult in some of your uh, illustrations, whether it be, I have a friend and she will 100% put feet behind bushes and she will put feet, you know, cross legs. So she's just like, I can't draw feet. I can't make them look right. So they're yeah, always hidden are, somehow. Yes. Feet are terrible. Feet are so hard to draw. And I, I always find myself doing this quite a bit. Like if I'm trying to, if there's an awkward, like a, a layout of if someone's standing in a room or something like that, and there's a weird perspective with how like the, the like they're in a kitchen or something like the counter, um, you know, a weird angle or something like that. Like I'll, I'll somehow find a way of like putting a chair or like a potted plant or something yeah. <laughs> to, to cover that area that's driving me crazy. Yeah. So if you see like a weird potted plant in any of my images, <laughs> like you'll know what I'm trying to do. <laughs> My dark secret <laughs> or a pillow or something more organic looking that I don't have to worry about perspective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you had uh, one piece of advice to give uh, someone who's wanting to pursue illustration, um, something you wish you had known earlier um, as a piece of advice, what would it be? Just uh, networking, just get, getting out there and talking to other illustrators and um, throwing ideas back and forth and, um, and just, um, one of the things I always regret, I know, you know, you can't go back and, you know, hindsight's only 2020, but, um, I always, I always wish that I was a little more ambitious at a younger age. Um, I didn't really get the, the fire to, to, to just, um, pick up projects or, um, perfect my craft until I was like in my late twenties. Mm. So I, I still feel like I'm, 
I don't want to say how old I am, but um, I still feel like I'm, I'm, I'm starting out, you know, like I always feel like everything, every, which is a good thing, I guess it's a, always a new experience for me. And, and uh, I, I just, yeah, I, I guess I wish I would have, I guess, kept more of a focus um, towards a, a certain, I was kind of all over the place when I was starting out as, as an illustrator, I was doing all kinds of, I was working in all kinds of different styles, which is good and bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, I guess it depends on who you talk to, but I wish, I think I would have, if I would have, I guess, uh, narrowed my focus a little more, I think I'd be in a better spot at this point. But, but you know, there's so many things you learn trying new things, and uh, I guess it's different for everybody. All right, Rob, this is the second segment of the show. This is where we dive a little bit deeper into you, um, where we talk a little bit more about uh, mental health. Everybody uh, in the world goes through down days, dark days, uh, has been through something where you feel utterly alone. But the thing is, is everybody goes through those things and and you're not alone. Uh, as an artist, as a creative, I know sometimes we feel those things, you know, very deeply um, because they help to inform our creativity ultimately. But it's, it's, it's gotta be, you gotta manage it sometimes. Yeah. So for you, how do you keep the darkness at bay? Well, I, you know, I mentioned some of that stuff earlier, like being, going for walks, being outside in nature and, and, um, but what, like the past, you know, five years or so have been kind of, kind of dark. I mean, to tell you the truth, things, things have been, you know, more of a struggle with the pandemic and now with you know, what's happening overseas right now. And, yeah. and, uh, just it, the, the stuff you see on the news, it's very depressing. And yeah. I, I have to kind of train myself to not look at my news feed. Mm. It's, it's kind of scary. And, um, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, and a lot of your past guests have mentioned this, like trying to live in the moment and, uh, be present and that really helps me. I sometimes I have to kind of detach myself from from some of my my because <laughs> I always have all these different you know crazy working on different ideas in my head and thinking about the future, or thinking of, of projects I want to work on and all that stuff. And I kind of forget what's ha- I kind of block out what's happening around me. And I think, yeah. man, my kids are only little once, and they're yeah. now they're already they're you know middle school age, but. Um, and just trying to be there for them as much as possible and um, support their, their, the things that they're interested in. And, yeah. and, um, and I think another thing f- for my, to be selfish, looking inward <laughs> um, to, for, to, to feel happy. I, a lot of times I, I, to, to deal with, you know, d- difficult things going on, I kind of reach back into the past and pull out, pull nostalgia. Like I, <laughs> like I watch, um, you know, old seventies uh, and eighties sitcoms like three's company and all, you know, like shows like yeah. that. <laughs> Cause it reminds me of a happier time when I was a kid and I didn't have yeah. any problem worries or that sort of thing. And I, I was really blessed to have, I had a really good childhood yeah. and I grew up in a, in a real safe uh, neighborhood and, nice kids and um my parents were very supportive and yeah I, I never really had any any you know i i had a pretty pretty smooth childhood yeah um i mean i i had my problems you know that that still you know the that everybody has um but i try not to dwell on that stuff yeah and uh i try not i also try not to um hold my kids back from, from certain things due to like my own personal fears. Like I always, yeah. I always worry my kids, you know, doing stupid things that maybe I did or having attitudes that I had. Yeah. And I try not to, I try to give them advice, but I try, I try to um, uh, not let my personal fears hold them back with certain things. Yeah. And it's, it's always that new thing. Like, I guess you're strapped. And I know you have, you have two sons, right? Yeah. And they're, they're in their twenties. I think yeah. you said, mm-hmm. and like, I, I always, you know, um, there's all, when I, when I had kids, there's all these new 
this new anxiety and fears that I never had as a, as a single guy or, or as a newly married guy, um, and that all that stuff kind of hits you and it becomes more real. Yeah. And, and sometimes that just is, is a downer. Yeah. You know, I, I'm always worrying that about them and, and, uh, and it, it gets to you after a while, but yeah. I just have to remind myself, um, that, uh, we're all going to make mistakes and not to be too hard on myself and, and, uh, everybody's different. And yeah. So, yeah. um, and some of those lessons we learned from making the mistakes. And sometimes we, as parents, I think all of us, we want to protect our kids from making those mistakes. But some of that greatest learning came when we made that mistake. And it's the only yeah. way they're going to learn is by kind of making it themselves. Even as much as we want to protect them from whatever heartache or problem that's going to be, you got to kind of, you got to loosen, loosen the grip a little to let them make that mistake so that they can learn. It's funny. Cause I always think back when I was younger and my parents would try to tell me something or, or warn me about something. I thought, Oh, you have no clue what I, you know, you have no clue what I'm going through right now. Or you, and, and it's funny looking back at that stuff and it just kind of makes me laugh. Cause it's yeah. like, Oh my God, they were right. Yeah, I can't tell them that they were right, but they were right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, once in a while I'll tell my mom that I'm talking to my mom and I'll say, well, oh, yeah, you were, uh, when you kind of warned me about this situation I was getting into or <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I guess I understand now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, uh, and I had to deal with that with my oldest Jacob He's living in Cornwall, England now. He's oh, big. really? Yeah. He wow. He moved to England last August, September, and then got married in November uh, to his now wife that, that lived over there. And it was hard enough then. And now with the state of the world, you know, I, I'm like, you're so much closer to the bad stuff right now. Yeah. I mean, you're yeah. a lot closer to the bad stuff right now. It's like, yes, it's, it's, you know, I, I told, I was on a FaceTime call and I was like, yeah, it's like, yeah, we're this far from all this stuff here in Georgia. You're this far from the stuff yeah. in England. And it's like seeing that it's an extra level of that kind of dread and worry, but you have to, you gotta, you gotta let them live their life some. Yeah. You know, yep. as much as you're like, you know, get on a plane, come back here, you know, spring everybody. But yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's hard because I see my kids too, like with, uh, with, with, with technology. I know parents all have this problem now, uh, but, but imagine growing up with um, social media, like, I'm not sure how old you are, but you know, when I was a kid, it's like you, now you're at, you, like you would get out of school and you, you, you were done. You were, you get home and that was like your safe place. Like say if you had a bad day at school or mm -hmm. you were feeling inferior or something like that and you come oh. home and I flip on the Brady bunch and veg out and <laughs> just, yeah. and then my day was finished and I could, I was in my safe place. Yeah. But like now kids, it's like you, 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 know, you go online and you see what all your friends are doing and what they're, and there's, you know, comments online and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, I can't imagine dealing with that at that age. So yeah. I always try to think, you know, protect my kids from some of that stuff. But yeah, it's, it's a whole different world we're in now. Yeah, for sure. And, and like you said, being able to, um, you know, you, you, you want to try and protect them and let them know that home is still a safe place. Um, and you know, whether it be, uh, the inferior inferiority complex they may have because, you know, social media that's curated content. That's, that's everybody's yeah. highlight reel. Nobody's putting, you know, the, you know, stubbing the toe at three o'clock in the morning, you know, trying to get to the bathroom reels up on their, <laughs> their Instagram. You know what I mean? It's like, but there are people that are doing it, <laughs> you know, everybody stubs their toe, you know? And so whether they're dealing with like an inferiority complex type thing because of the curated content they see from somebody else, from their friends or whatever, or if it is that, uh, and, you know, and I, I hate this part of social media is that malicious hiding behind the keyboard bully. Oh, you know, yeah. Making comments that, yep. like, you know, 
that could be people you don't even know. And, yeah. And, and, and they always have, that. they're always an, an anonymous yeah. person too. Whenever I get a nasty comment on Instagram, like a cruel comment or a, mm-hmm. you know, a racist comment or something, yeah. it's always somebody that's, you know, hiding behind a different name or, mm-hmm. you know, um, that's another thing. What's even as adults with, with social media, I mean, we have to be careful that too. It's like, I, sometimes I'll, I'll go on there and I'll, I'll start to feel inferior because I'll see all these like, you know, illustrators that have all these really cool pieces or working on projects. And you kind of like start to think like, why am I not getting that kind of work or why, you know? And, and I, it's funny because um, tying this in with the nostalgia bit, I, I, when I was a kid, I used to, another thing growing up in the eighties, I was a big fan of like eighties pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. And once in a while, when I'm eating lunch, I'll, I'll go back and I'll watch like, interviews with like 1980s pro wrestlers yeah and yeah. one of the guys do you remember leap leaping lanny Poffo? no he was or he was uh, i don't know if you watched wrestling in the 80s but I, he was i did i did they used to come to the civic center here in town and my grandparents would take us we'd go watch wrestling he was um he was actually the brother of macho man randy savage okay his younger brother okay and he um, I saw an interview with him and this, this quote, I always try, I want to almost get like a, get put this on a, you know, on a frame, but he had a quote where he said that people always ask him, what was it like, you know, living in your brother's shadow? And cause he was a pro wrestler too, but he was more of like one of those enhancement talent guys that right. kind of got beat up a lot. And, right. and he never got the stardom that his brother got, but, uh, but he was a, a famous wrestler, well-known and, but he always, his, his motto was you know, that he, he liked living in his brother's shadow and he had no problem with that. And he was proud of his brother, but he always says his motto is uh, do your best and forget the rest where do, you know, do what you, the best you can possibly do and, and stop comparing yourself to others. And, and, uh, and I, I'm trying to remind, remind myself of that. I always think of that. And I, I kind of tell that to my kids too. It's kind of funny. Um, but but yeah, like I, I, I do that where I'll, I'll, I'll be in a bookstore and I'll, I'll walk around and I'll see like six different books all illustrated by the same illustrator. And I think, what is this guy doing that I'm not, you know, like he, it's, it's kind of, uh, or how is, I mean, it's a very talented illustrator, obviously, but, uh, I think like, like, how are they getting these projects? And, but yeah, it's, and I feel kind of inferior and, uh, but which it's weird that that yeah. uh, that inferior complex also sometimes comes along with a, um, uh, uh, an imposter syndrome too. That too. That's another like, huge you, thing. You, you know, you you kind of you're getting the bad of both sides of this coin, where it's like, yep. it's like, you know, I'm doing this thing. I'm not as good as this other person. Why do I will why do they I will get a job and I'll think, oh my god, there's so many people that I know that are far more talented than me that are looking for work right now. And I think, how did I get this job? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. So, and there's that little, you know, tinge of guilt that you have, but, but yeah, something I'm trying to work on, I guess. (laughs) Do your best. Forget the rest. Yes. All right, Rob, it is segment three now. It is time now for the Fast Five. Fast Five. <laughs> it's time now for the Fast Five. So, so how are you doing on getting that jingle? Uh, you're, are you, you were going to get the jingle made? I'm you could still do like workshop- an 80s metal? Yeah, I'm like- still, <laughs> still workshopping that. Still trying to, you know, get with a, somebody who really gets the feel for what the Fast Five is. You know, I just hadn't found the right uh, <laughs> collaborator yet on that. But uh, <laughs> the Fast Five Love is, that. is powered by Poddex. It's an app created by my friend Travis Brown. Uh, it's created for podcasters it's uh, conversation starters it's interview questions uh there's an app you can find in any of your app stores and also there are physical decks that you can get as well which are great to keep you know four or five of those in your back pocket wherever you go if you gotta you know talk to people and you're not used to talking to people they're really great conversation starters and if you go to chewingthefatbr.com slash pod decks you can use promo code chew and get 10 percent off your decks but the way this goes rob is i'm gonna hit the randomizer gonna pick five questions First answer comes off the top of your head. No wrong answers. I've had people think that they're wrong answers. There are no wrong answers. So just uh, whatever you're feeling. You ready? This is the one I'm most nervous for. 
Everyone says that. I don't get I'm it. I'm a slow thinker. Oh, it's okay. Well, I mean, you can ruminate while, while we go over it. Here's question number one. What kind of pajamas do you wear? Uh, depends. Um, Wait, not like the diaper thing. You, you mean like yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. that too. <laughs> um, frequent accidents. No, um, uh, in the in the it's cold in Wisconsin in the winter, so usually just like f- like flannel pajama pants. Mm-hmm. And in the summer, I just wear regular shorts. Okay, like um, yeah, like not cargo shorts, but just like regular like athletic shorts or something like that. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much me year round is, you know, athletic, you know, gym, gym short type things in a t-shirt mm-hmm. cause it's, it's Georgia yeah, t-shirt too. Yeah. It's Georgia. So it's usually, uh, I always have a t-shirt on no matter what <laughs> in the shower. In yeah, the pool. That too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question number two, name one thing on your bucket list. Wow, bucket list. Uh, well, there's lots of travel places. Okay. Um, Australia would be one of them. Mm. Um, Ireland is another one. Yes. Um, geez, bucket list. Well, kind of what I mentioned earlier, I'd like to do a creator own project. Nice. Okay. Like a graphic novel or a children's book series. And I've, I've, I've had tons of them that I've developed that just, I just could not get to a story to, to <laughs> materialize gotcha. from my crazy drawings. Okay. Okay. But I mean, that's, I mean, that's, it's great that it's still on there. It's something to, there'll be a check mark by that at some point. I guarantee you, Rod, there'll be a check mark by that, that piece Thank on you. your bucket list at some point. <laughs> All right. And number three. If humans came with a warning label, what would yours say? Oh man. Um contents under pressure. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> gosh, well, that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> I think it may be contents under pressure. <laughs> um no direct eye contact. I don't know. <laughs> I don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm an introvert, so no, I'm just kidding. No, no, that I mean, you know, that that, that makes sense, you know. <laughs> you know, that that I I feel like I feel like my I am one of those weird like like right on the line introvert, extrovert type people, you know? So it's it it just all depends on the people in the situation which which side of that coin I'm going to fall on. Do not expose the sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Question number four. Toilet paper, over or under? Over. Over. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. And I heard that the, the episode you had about the spider thing. The, the mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. Was that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the spider hiding behind. Hiding the behind the thing. Paper. And then you pull it out and it jumps out at you or whatever. Yeah, it's like, huh? I'd, 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 I'd read that online or saw that somewhere that that's, that's why they do it the other way. I'm like, it still makes no sense, but whatever. Yeah. It drives me crazy when my kids will, you know, replace when, when they do replace the toilet yes. paper in the bathroom rarely, but sometimes they'll do that. They'll flip it around. It, that drives me crazy. It's what I always run into with uh, the child that is still here, the 20, four year old child that is still here at the house is usually it's a roll of toilet paper on the edge of the tub. I'm like, Oh yeah, <laughs> there's a roll right there. There's a place for it. You obviously finished it. It's your bathroom. <laughs> why is it on the tub? Why is, why is that where it goes? And it's not like it, like it's a new one and he's sitting there. No, it'll be, it'll stay there and it will go and it will end up being, you know, completely used, never having made it over to the dispenser roll thing. And I, I just, <laughs> <laughs> drives drives me nuts. Yeah. I just don't get it. I just do not. <laughs> All right. And number five. When is the last time you cried? Um, I want to admit this. Well, I get like, I tear up easily. 
Yeah. There was something, I might have been your podcast. There was someone oh. was telling a story. Um, oh, it was the episode. I can't remember his name, but he's, a, I think, an actor friend of yours who had um, a little boy that was, that, that had a condition mm-hmm. and he passed away at 16 months. Yeah. Yeah. And that really, that story really got to me. And I, I actually, that was this, uh, this morning or yesterday. Oh, wow. I worked on that it, it, and that made me missed up quite a bit. And then some of the, the sites we're seeing of Ukraine now, yeah, that too. It's like, Oh my God. Mm-hmm. For sure. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. I had to go. I didn't, it was a random, I had to go out on like a downer question or anything like that. But also let me say, thank you so much for listening to the podcast as much as you have. You, <laughs> you, you, you've got, you know, I'm a huge homework. fan. I love the show. dude. I appreciate that so much. Well, that is our fast five and that is the show, Rob. Thank you so much for taking some time to speak to a stranger over a, a webcam. Well, thanks, for, Rob. For an hour or so, uh, Double B, I, I really appreciate your time and your openness. And uh, if folks want to keep up with you, what's the what's the best way they can do that? Well, um, I I have a website, but it, I have not updated it, and it's still a placement page. I redesigned it a few, a few years ago, and then took it down, and then. I am in the process of redesigning the site, but I'm most active on Instagram. So um, R-O-B-B, two Bs like you, Momarts is spelled M-O-M-M-A-E-R-T-S. And that, that's where you'll, you'll see all my latest stuff. When I, when lately I've been a little dry with putting things up there. I just put up some St. Patrick's Day thing. I'm big on holidays, so I'm always putting holiday mm-hmm. art up. So, uh, but yeah, you'll see all my latest artwork on Instagram pretty much. So, well, we will put the link up for your Instagram in the show notes. And of course you can find that on the website as well, along with all of our past guests at chewingthefatbr.com. Rob, it really truly has been a pleasure. Uh, I I hope we stay in touch. I, again, I am a fan of what you do. Uh, and I wish you nothing but success uh, in all of your current and future endeavors. You too. Thanks, Rob. I really appreciate you having me. Thank you. If you would like to support this podcast, I'd appreciate it if you buy me a coffee at chewingthefatbr.com. And I look forward to the next time we have a moment to sit a spell and chew the fat. Mm-hmm.